Welcome to the Gain and Fast on Memphis podcast with Aaron Shriver, brought to you by Arlo Revolution. Each week, Aaron connects melodies and memories with fans and artists from all genres of life. When all else in life is gone, only music will be left to leave the legacy of life's adventures. Please welcome your host for the Gain and Fast on Memphis podcast, Aaron Shriver. What is up, everybody? Man, it's going to be a fun show tonight. Get that music out of here. Yeah, all right. I'm always at different angles every week. It's kind of cool. I'm actually doing um, a little bit of construction down here and uh, building and working on a new desk and a new whole new setup. So it's going to be kind of cool coming in the next couple weeks or so. But uh, welcome to Tuesday night. So it's going to be a great night. If you guys are here, once again, if you guys could drop a comment or anything just to say, hey, you guys can hear me. Everything sounds, looks good. And then on top of that, if you guys could really hit the share button because we're going to have a good one tonight. Uh, I'm actually going to introduce you guys to someone maybe you guys haven't heard of or some of you might uh, might already have heard of this guy because I know I've been talking about him for a while over the past year or so. But um, once again, welcome to episode 35 of the Gaining Fast on Memphis podcast, a place where we connect melodies and memories with fans and artists in the music community. We share stories and chat about how our passions have brought us all together and tonight we are presented by our good friends over at Arlo Revolution, uh, the cinematic wedding films, music videos, and promos. You can find them at Arlo, ArloRevolution.com and on Facebook. Also to all of our Patreons, uh, we're going to have a really fun after show tonight if you guys are part of our Patreon. But thank you guys again for everybody that's in that. We'll talk here in a minute. But uh, Art on a Higher Wire, Janet Stolth Creative, and Corey O and the Original Church Choir, thank you guys so much for all your support. You can find... Joel and Art on the Higher Wire all over Facebook. She's original and custom artwork inspired by your life moments, treasured photos, and memories. And then as well as Janet Stolth Creative, online marketing services services guaranteed to make companies be found and succeed on the web. Find them on Facebook. <sighs> all the fun stuff's out of the way. No. So, hey, if you guys, once again, if you guys can hit the share button and share tonight's show so we could totally rock it. Hey, what's up, Zach? Yeah, I'm definitely, you can see by the shirt, I rock the wheeling gear tonight. Um, all my family lives in wheeling and definitely it's home away from home out there for sure. I love it. I'm supporting it tonight. But uh, if you guys can hit the share and button and try to help us support this artist tonight and uh, really just get the show out there. If you guys can't do the shares or Patreon or anything, I totally understand. But if you are listening on any streaming sites and you could totally hit a five-star review on that for us. And help us move up. We did break the top 200 again after Lewis's episode last week, as well as we had our most watched Facebook episode. So Ray Scott was sorry, someone said they lost me. I was just making sure I'm still there. So Ray Scott was our highest. Okay. I want to make sure I can hear myself. He was our highest at 15,000 views last week. Lewis topped it with 24,000. So Thanks for sharing it, you guys. I really appreciate it. We're going to get it out again this week because I definitely, like I said, I want this guy to be heard. So if you guys are streaming on Apple anywhere, five-star reviews would be great. We uh, were at 187 uh, the other day on, what was it, Apple 200 or whatever. So that's pretty exciting for music interviews. Anytime I can break the top 200, I get excited. No way, Bill. There ain't. You cannot... Is it really the news of Alice Cooper passing away? Did that just really happen? That is totally wild if it did, because I think I have a few autographs on my wall by him. I hope that is not true. So, man, men are sad news. I think someone reported when John Prine passed away, too, on my show. So stop stop ruining shows at the beginning. <laughs> Let's get through this one, guys. But uh, once again, if you guys are on our Patreon, our monthly giveaway is a Lewis Bryce uh, prize pack. It'll be an autographed EP, T-shirt, and hat, as well as an autographed copy of The Divine Devils by Jeremy Spillman. So you can actually see my copy right here, sitting here, and love the book. It's amazing. Audiobook's even amazing. You guys heard it before when I talked to Jeremy. So, All right, Bill, well, let us know. <laughs> I hope it's not. But, uh, Yes, once again, everything helps with Patreon. Every dollar helps. It starts at just $1, and it goes up to sponsorship. So check it out. I'll share the link. And uh, if it's a five, if you join as a $5 sponsor, you are part of the after show. I'll add you to our Facebook group uh, where we go live at every night. And uh, we're going to have a fun one tonight. So 
me go ahead and do that. Get all that out of there, all that BS out of there. Let's get to the show. Who's ready for it? So, but tonight we're going to welcome in a good friend of mine. I first met Skylar about three years ago. I really only met him in person one time so far, but well, we've really talked online a lot and I've seen him, I think about three times, uh, once in Jackson, twice in Nashville. And every time I've seen him, I really like to see him see growth in artists. And, uh, he's one that I've actually seen when I've seen him, he gets better every time I see him. And we're going to talk a little bit about something like that tonight, um, with him. But uh, let's go ahead and bring him on and get him, get this Mississippi boy out here. Have my little, oh, he's drinking the Jack. Look at that. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing tonight? You here all right? Oh, man, I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. See, we got Zach in here. You know what Zach? He's saying, woo, Skylar. <laughs> yeah, Zach from Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah good guy right there he was talking about my hat so he's definitely a good guy so man uh welcome to the show i've been wanting to have you on for a while just kind of really introduce you to everybody because i know you're you're pretty pretty passionate about eric church man and so we have a lot in common and i mean as you can see my my background behind me is all i've been looking at the whole time i'm in love (laughs) it's everything tells a story too so i mean it goes on for a little bit but uh and that's kind of like how i really kind of got drawn to you i mean i saw you uh i kind of know you you wrote some songs with singleton uh, so i saw you with uh was it jackson sound event or something that you guys were doing yeah it was at the uh call carl perkinson civic center I think. yeah 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 it was you guys and um what was josh's band josh yeah uh josh smith uh, here we go i found it yeah there we go oh man look at that <laughs> that was insane I, say, I, I had it somewhere what was that that was that long ago? 17. 2017. That's why I, I was like, man, I only felt like a couple years ago. But uh, so that's why I first, I, we went down a couple of us. We uh, we traveled down there because uh, it was like Thanksgiving weekend or something. It was right after Thanksgiving. And uh, so we were going to see Singleton because I hadn't seen him for a while. And then, dude, you blew me away. Like, I thought you were going to go to, everybody went to the tavern afterwards, like an after party. So I was like looking for you to like introduce yeah. myself. I'm like, where's this guy at? And never could find you. But I was like, I was like, that was awesome. I remember I was there with a couple of my buddies. They might be watching tonight too. And we, I remember I turning them. I'm like, this guy's really fucking good. Like, this is your your the whole band, and you just kind of the way you groove together. And now, kind of knowing you, your band and you are really close. Like, you guys came to Nashville together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, Colton Parker was uh, was my original bass player, but he he's uh, playing with Hunter Hayes mm-hmm. now. So when Colton Parker left. Um, uh, I got Chris Dickerson, who I already knew. Courtney Courtney uh, Brown, who was my original drummer, he uh, kind of left because he was working a real job and he had kids and all that. And um, so I got uh, damn Chris kid. Dickerson. I know Chris Chris Dickerson, and then I got Trevor, I found Trevor McKay. Man, it's so hard to find great yep. guitar players. When I got Trevor McKay, uh, me Trevor, well Trevor started playing with me and Colton first. We started playing at Nudies, and uh, my yeah. first night in Trevor at Nudies, I was like, yeah, this is. Yeah, this is it right here. And then um, we I never had a rehearsal. We never with you had a before. Rehearsal. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying we've never had a rehearsal together. Never rehearsed. Oh, that is yeah. insane, dude. You guys just came together like that. Yeah, came together. the only time we rehearse is like when we do something like uh, like when we open up for somebody. Like when we yeah. get ready to open up for somebody, that's the only time we rehearse. But oh, when yeah. we go and do these shows, we it's all about, you know, we don't go by a set list. It's not a set yeah. list. Well, that's you what know. I noticed about you guys. I saw you at... Uh, Dirks, I think it was playing. You're playing Dirks's bar. Yeah, that's when, the, yeah. when I saw you guys, and uh, man, you're rocking it out there. But Trevor, man, he, he wails. And if you guys are out there, and you guys followed Tucker at all. Trevor was with Tucker for a yeah. while, Tucker, for um, me. about two years or so ago, and just dude was was shredding on the guitar. So yeah. he's so quiet, and the way the way he you know looks, you wouldn't think he could shred a guitar like that. <laughs> I know, man. It's na- it's so nasty. It's so nasty. And then I know uh, another good friend of mine was in and out of your band for a while, Andy Dixon. I know you played with him oh, for a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. When I yeah, when Cody left, I said I wanted Andy. I want. I used to go yeah. see Andy play at um, the Tap, and I when mm-hmm. Cody, when I knew Cody was leaving, I, I used to be. I said Andy, I would put you on salary if you would come and play for me. <laughs> and man, I, he, he, he over. He he is, a what a great guy he is too, right? Mm-hmm. So I knew him. I uh for I think from 2005 to 2009 ish. Uh, 
my wife and I, we were just dating at the time. We moved down to Corinth, Mississippi. And uh, we, so we lived down in Corinth for a while. And that's where I first heard. I know one day my wife came home with a CD. It was a Saving Able CD. And uh, I think the best song on it was like After All or something. It was before they ever hit. And she's like, oh, this is a guy I work with. And so that's when I first heard about like Blake Dixon and all those guys. And so then I met Andy through Singleton's band when yeah. he was out touring with Jonathan Singleton. But uh, it was it's crazy because you're from South Haven, Mississippi, so yeah. which wasn't far at all. At all. And, uh, I'm like not even two hours from Como. Not even east from uh, – they're from Como or, or Corinth. Corinth. Oh, okay. We got a good report. Got, he got it wrong. Guitarist and songwriter for Alice Cooper passed away. Uh, oh, yeah. Dude, I, had I, me, you, I was here. Yeah. Holy crap. Uh, I was doing because I know I think the same guy reported John Prine died on my show like a month ago. I was like, no, not another one. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we were, I was down in South Haven and this is kind of like where it's such a small world because like you, that's where your, your hometown is. Well, the first place it was June 4th. 2006 i still remember it snowden grove amphitheater wasn't even built yet all they had was a stage and lawn and leonard yeah. skinner and jason aldean played there and eric church opened and he was the first guy that played right before aldean and it was the very first time i ever saw Eric church it was like i was going to see skinner i was a huge leonard skinner fan man and we were going to this newly built amphitheater we get there and there ain't shit there <laughs> just barely porta potties there and everything like it was a mess it was like a mud pit and that was actually the first day I think I was introduced to moonshine too. <laughs> yeah, actual yeah. actual my, Mississippi moonshine. My my first time seeing uh, Eric Church, man, my my it was one of my first country concert. It was called the um, the Seto Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was Jason. It was Love and Theft, Eric Church, Jason Aldean. Oh I, wow! I didn't really know who Love and Theft was, but I was there to see Jason Aldean, and Eric Church came on for Jason Aldean. And yep. I remember sitting on the side of the stage and I could see like the back of the stage. On, like I was on the far end of the side. And when Eric Church came out and played and I, I looked at my buddy, Austin Livingston, I'll never forget. And I was like, that's what I want to do. That's the type <laughs> of energy I want at every single show I put out. That's the type of energy and type of love I want to have. If I'm going to do this, I was like, that's it. That's just, that's what I want to do. So Eric, yep. Church, Eric Church was that person who really, got me to say okay this is this is for real this if i if i'm going to do it every time i play every night i play i want i want that same energy every night and that's why i go out and give my same energy and that was my first time being introduced to every church you know so and I, I think I, I that's why i picked up on you too because i mean i saw that from you when i saw you in jackson that one time it was a good show. it was a high energy show for you and, and i think that's just really just kind of then i looked down saw the jack daniels tattoo and i know we talked a little bit prior for going live we're both squires and so we can I connected to you on that part. I was like, oh shit, Andy loves some Jack Daniels. So this guy, this guy's legit. <laughs> I think that's why I was looking for you to buy you a shot. But uh, so when did you really first like jump into music and really decide that this is what I want to do? This is where my life's leading me. Well, I um, I moved to South Haven, Mississippi. Uh, I started going to South Haven High School, and um. Man, I didn't know I really could sing. There's really no like kind of like singing in my family. And for some reason, to be a goofball, I was like a class clown. So I, there's a thing at South Haven High that was called the South Haven Idol. I was a freshman. And um, mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up going to South Haven Idol. The choir teacher just, I guess the choir teacher just saw Mr. Glass. Uh, I guess he just saw something in me. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to uh, South Haven Idol and I ended up just being a goofball, man. <laughs> I ended up winning <laughs> a whole damn thing. I ended up winning it all. Man. And I looked back on the videos and I was like, maybe I can sing this a little bit. So <laughs> about two months, about, I don't know, about two months later, I think I was coming out the restroom about 630 in the morning. And I'm brushing my teeth. My mom was like, uh, the X Factor is coming to the U.S. And I'm like, the X Factor? And she's like, yes, yeah, sing a show Sam McCall is bringing. And I was like, oh, OK. And she's like, you want to go? I, was like, I mean, it's 630. Yeah, OK, whatever. <laughs> so my buddies ended up throwing me a party and uh uh, a going away party or something like that. And we didn't even know what we were throwing a party for. We were just doing it. And I ended up getting the house at like three o'clock in the morning. My mom wakes me up at six. We go to Franklin, Tennessee. I go in this booth and try out for it. Sound mm -hmm. out the screen and ask my name. And about two weeks later, I end up walking upstairs to my apartment and uh, I get a phone call and say I made it. And I end up going on the show and making it to the top eight out of 254,000 people. And after so you, you tried out in Tennessee for it? 
Yeah, I tried out in Franklin, Tennessee. Oh, okay. I went to Chicago to do it because that's like, why I was gonna say I thought you were in Chicago for part of it. Yeah, the first original one was uh just steps, you know. So uh it's just I mean it was crazy. And I ended up coming back home off the show when I made it. I so you were only up, fifteen years old at the time. Yeah, I was fit sixteen, yeah. Fifteen and a half, sixteen, yeah. Mm-hmm. I ended up I ended up and I and when I came back home I was like the town star or something, you know. And it was <laughs> it was kind of weird because I've never been like that. You know, it was it was crazy. I couldn't go anywhere. And it was like you're the South Haven, Mississippi star. And I ended up, uh, I think, taking a few months off, something like that, to try to really make sure it's what I wanted to do. And uh, I ended up yeah. playing a small old pizza gig. And after that, it was just like, okay, this is what I want to do. And um ended up opening up for Jamie Johnson. Jamie Johnson, they gave me a chance. And uh, I was 16. And um, I'll never forget that. And after Jamie Johnson gave me a chance, I knew if Jamie Johnson gave me a chance, I knew that. This was something serious, you know. He, was that I mean, your like your first big? My, like, that, that was my first time playing in front of actually, yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I knew I had it. <laughs> yeah, that was my first time playing uh, in front of over. I mean, over a thousand people. I mean, at that we yeah. were at the we were at a uh, the what you were just talking about the um the muddy where uh, uh, uh Milton Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, yep. yeah, we were over there, and uh, of course, it was all built up a little more then. Now they just changed it again, but uh, yeah, because they had seats in it. The second time I went back, they had seats in it at that time. Yeah, that's when I opened up for him. Yeah, he had seats in okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I believe that picture right there. And not, I was on this bus, and he had he had these two uh, little bulldogs, and he was like <laughs> usually like bark, and he usually have to put them up, but they they didn't bother me. I actually, one sit on my lap. <laughs> it was. It was so cool, it was, and he taught me a lot, man. And uh, ended up opening up for him, and then went to Sister Hazel, and then uh, I mean, ended up, those guys used to jam. I've heard yeah. that name a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, Sister Hazel, Dylan Scott, John Party, and it just took mm-hmm. me, you know, away. So that, was, I, that what brought you to Nashville then? Well, you, you know, Nash brought me in Nashville. I played at a place called Blue Moon. I was probably okay. seventeen years old, and um, it is. First time, but I'm in Nashville and I tried to play at Tootsie's and I was just too young and I could barely get in. They would barely let me in. But uh, I just always, I just knew if I wanted to do anything, I had to get to Nashville. If I wanted to yeah. be in the country scene at all, you know, Nashville was the place that I definitely had to be. And, you know, I, I just moved to Nashville after I've been playing Nashville for, you know, seven, eight years and I just moved here almost a year ago. You know, we were traveling two or three hours back and forth, you know, mm-hmm. every night, you know, playing, you know, so. But uh, we oh, yeah. cruise. <laughs> yeah, we were putting some gas, you know, and and some miles on the truck. So uh, yeah, I finally just moved here. I just knew I, I knew, and everybody kept telling me, man, Colton, we would come up here and 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 write songs, you know, drive from Jackson, Tennessee, and write songs, and then drive back, mm-hmm. come up here, play a show three, four nights a week, and drive back every night, you know, not stay at night. So it was just where would you uh, where would you play in that or uh, Jackson? Jackson, Tennessee, uh, Red Bones, man. Uh, nice. Okay. We used to stay literally our condo, uh, not condo, but uh, our loft was literally like two blocks from downtown Tavern. Oh, sweet, dude. Yeah, we stayed. So I used to always walk in downtown. On weekdays, that's where you could find me. When I didn't oh, have yeah. anything, to do, anything to do, I was at the downtown Tavern because I stayed in Jackson for about three and a half years. For I'm time. sure we probably crossed paths before you ever knew it because I hung out few times at the tavern with josh yeah. probably between 2005 2009 yeah i would say a couple of times there was one night i still remember because we went to see ecw at the arena what's that arena right there not the carl perkins but they have a, a small arena or whatever in jackson at the amp is that what it is the outside? It's like a, no it's an indoor one mm, I, I, I forgot what it was. It was on the outskirts, I think, of Jackson. But they had something where we went and saw uh, ECW wrestling or whatever. And we were hanging out at the tavern beforehand. It was like it was only like a mile or so from the tavern, I thought. But it wasn't Carl Perkins. It was a small little like convention center or something. I'm trying to I think what it was. What was that? I'm trying to think of what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I have to look it up that one of these days. But yeah, man, I saw it. Well, Church played in Jackson too at Carl Perkins with Jason Aldean. Mm. I forgot what year. That was probably like 2000. Eight maybe two thousand seven. Yeah, I didn't so, know anything about Eric two thousand eight two thousand seven. Man, yeah, and he was all around you. <laughs> no, he was all around me. See, I didn't get, I didn't get into like, 
really get into country country music until I don't know 2010, 2011. Okay. You know, so that's when I really got into it. You know, so what brought you, what brought you to the countryside then? Man, you know it's gonna sound goofy as it sounds, but uh, Darius Rucker really, really did. Okay, I was flipping through the channel and uh, I saw Darius Rucker, and I think he had just switched over to country. Mm -hmm. And in case to hear his song, uh, I think it was all right. In case to hear that song, I used to bring a radio in my room every night. I used to have a radio in my room and the bathroom. I used to <laughs> radio in my room. You stay on the country, uh, the country channel. It was ninety five point three, The Rebel. And um, in case to hear that song, I used to um, I used to turn on ninety five point three, The Rebel, and mm -hmm. every other, every other song that would play before they came with that song, it used to describe my life or somebody's life I've known. Like, oh man, I know somebody who's been through that, or mm -hmm. I know somebody. Oh, we just did that last week, you know, you know, we just partied at that person's house last week or something like that, like. So it was like, oh man, this is, and I end up, you know, picking up a guitar and just, that was it. You know, it was just, I always, I always used to love to write, you know, writing was always my yeah. way. So I always, always had lyrics, always had stuff by me. So once I picked up a guitar and just learned, it was just, it went from there, you know. Oh, for sure. So speaking about writing, how did you get hooked up with Singleton? I mean, was <laughs> that being around Jackson or? Kind yeah, of, well, you yeah. wrote a couple of songs together, right? Yeah, it's it's been around Jackson. Uh, I see. I didn't know anything about Jonathan Singleton um, until Coden them said something about him. And <laughs> if, if you, I'm, I'm about to give you the raw, real story of this. Right All now. right, here we go. <laughs> All right. So I didn't know anything about Jonathan Singleton, I, and they told me he is he. You know, he wrote those songs. You know, uh, airplanes and red light. And yeah. uh, there was a few people who kept telling, "Hey, there's this new guy in Jackson. You know, he's kind of like making his name for himself. He just moved here." But and um, to be honest, Jonathan didn't really want to do. He didn't. He didn't want to work with any artist. Uh, he 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 didn't have the time. Uh, he didn't want to work with me. He didn't. I mean, he really did. He didn't have the time. He just. It was true. I mean, he just didn't work want to work with anybody. But they and it's been. It, it was about I don't know a few months and uh, we did a show at the Hard Rock Cafe in Memphis. First time ever playing there, but it was a big event that was going on. That we got hired for, and um, they had us on their camera there, and they posted it. And I guess we were doing um, break up with him, and we was doing it like funky, you know. It was it yeah, wasn't, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like your typical radio version, and I uh, and I, I I don't know that that video was around the internet for a while, and I think about two weeks later, I get a call from Scholar Sage and Coton, like, hey. Jonathan wants to talk to you, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, and I forgot all about you. I'm not going to lie, I forgot all about you, you know. And I was like, uh, like, oh, cool. And uh, I ended up, we ended up talking one morning early, early one morning, man. And uh, mm -hmm. and that's when, that if you if you notice, that's when you only can get a hold of Jonathan or he'll get a hold of you. It's, <laughs> yep. he, he, it's around 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. And it, it <laughs> oh, dude, oh, dude, I'm sorry, man, what's up? And uh, <laughs> uh but yeah, I was like planning, planning my show with him, trying to text yeah. back and forth. It's like, oh, okay, man. I'll get you up in the morning, man. The dad with dad time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, so I end up going to Jackson um, and meeting him. I was still staying mm -hmm. in uh, Mississippi then, and I end up meeting him, and we end up talking, and we uh, he end up showing me a lot of great songs, and um, we end up getting some songs uh, together. I liked that he liked that thought that fit me, and. Um, that was it. That was that was for us. And, uh, yeah, it was cool. cool. He, I mean, his style. You know, his the way. If you know Jonathan, you know he started that little, uh, that little fast little thing. Every bit of love that's been this beat up, banged up, scarred up heart that's been. You know that little. Oh yeah. You know the Jonathan Singleton song. Once you hear that little fast little, blah 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 blah, sure. and, then, and that little one little eight eight counter song. <laughs> oh, I love it. it. It's what makes him man. Yeah, yeah, and I love it. It's really, it's really neat. So, so what songs have you released? Any songs that you guys wrote together, or no? Uh, well, you know, he wrote uh, "Running Back to You," and uh, I okay. wrote the songs that uh, that really did big for me, and um, um, and I love it. I I, I thought everything. Yeah. About it. I didn't really have that one later. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really have to change anything in this song. Uh, we never really got a chance to actually sit down and write write together. Okay. There's one song that he did that I, I think me and Coden changed like a couple of words in it because it didn't go with me. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys wanted it to. Yeah, but um, 
Yeah, we haven't like really sat down, and uh, we need to do that. I mean, he, I'm here now, so he is. He's, hell, hell yeah! He's probably like 30 minutes from me. He got his own. <laughs> he got his own little Singleton compound. So yeah, right. I mean, I mean, what he's doing at 50 Egg is just awesome. That'd be cool, oh, man. Yeah. Though if you guys got hooked up on that too. So you get over there because that'd be big for you, dude. Yeah, yeah. My buddy, my buddy uh, Jacob Lutz just signed. Signed. Yeah. Up. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, they're they're putting together a pretty solid lineup over there, dude. <laughs> nah, they got hit songwriters, man. They it's, yep. it's nice to it's nice to see him happy doing what he enjoys doing too. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, you know him like I do, and he never likes to be in the spotlight. He never wanted to be in the spotlight. I mean, that's just was never single thing. That's that's any real southern boy almost. Yeah. I mean, a couple of them get the itch, but hey, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to go back a little bit. Let's see, to when you were on X Factor. Let's see, do, 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 put all this stuff up. So, you when you filmed your the audition that was on TV was that in Chicago or was that Tennessee? That was in Chicago. We we didn't start okay. we didn't start filming until I got to Chicago. Yeah. Well, so where where was that in Chicago? Uh, man. was it like a hotel or? No, it was a big like convention center or something like that. Uh, I bet you it was Rosemont. I bet yeah. you it was like the Stevens Convention Center. Okay. Okay, I live right here in Chicago. So that's why I was curious. I was like, I wonder where they were. Really? I got a family in Chicago, man. Oh, really? Yeah. What part? Like in, in the city or outside? Uh, I think it, it's on the south side. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't think of um, I'll think of the name here in a minute. But yeah, I I'm northern Illinois. So I'm, I'm about maybe halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee. Yeah. So. And next time you come up, you gotta holler. I got yeah, stage, stage down here. <laughs> we did a few shows. Uh, we did two shows in uh, Chicago, and I think two shows in Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, for New Year's, like two years ago or something like that. I remember when you were talking about you came up. You played Milwaukee. Yeah, two Milwaukee and two Chicago. Because yeah. you was, I forgot where. What, what bar was in Milwaukee? You guys played. I, I was gonna come up to that one. Something happened that night. Hey, one thing I would never do that again and drive. <laughs> On New Year's because it was snowing and I'm not yep. good. No, of course none of us from the south is good driving in the snow. So, <laughs> I, dude, when I lived down there, everything was shut down if it snowed. <laughs> uh, and then, then it and then the traffic traffic plus snow with sub with four southern guys <laughs> in in the car together it don't work. <laughs> it does not work. I tell you that. That's crazy. So you had something unique happen though uh, on your video, and I want to play just a little clip of this. I'm gonna mute our mics real quick so I can play this. Just can't understand. Sometimes all it takes to please her. Good. Keep going. Is the touch of your hand. And other times you gotta take it slow. Yeah. You nailed it, dude. I mean, that is this unheard of like because any 16 year old that would happen to i would break down like i would just like run off stage like be embarrassed because you had a you had a studio audience right yeah 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 it was studio and audience. you just like you just looked over like okay like, yeah. like you gave that like little look over your shoulders like all right let's do this I, I'm, <laughs> I'm that type of guy i'm like um you know i've calmed down over the years but i was mm -hmm. like like spot on guy like okay if this happens we have i mean we got to keep it going you know yeah and, like one of those times, the time doesn't stop because you stop. You know, you gotta you gotta keep going. Time, so it's just like exactly, and you won them over. And yeah, and I even think that you like almost. It sounds like you found your game in a way. And it yeah. sounded like the minute you lost that music, you found your zone and almost like perfected it. Like, dude, because you went it almost sounded like like I'm not I'm totally tone deaf when it comes to any music, but it sounded like you almost may start off key at first with the music and then uh, boom it went out and you're like perfect like it, i was like when i watched that back i was like this is badass like like how you shined in that moment yeah. so it was really cool that you were over overcome that at that age because about like said, he, no. about, about four months before this look at this picture about four months before that I mm -hmm. had no freaking idea that I would ever be singing or doing any of that. <laughs> That's wild, man. That is so yeah. wild. You finished, what, was it eighth place you said, or top ten? Uh, top eight boys, yeah. Man, that is awesome, dude. 
Yeah. That's pretty cool, though, to be able to do that far and especially please Simon because that yeah, dude could never be pleased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's actually a really good, great guy in real life. Really, really nice guy. Yeah, I've heard that before. I heard that. I heard a lot of it. There we go. Someone dropped it. Omen Arena in Jackson. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Omen Arena. I'm glad somebody out there. And thanks, Shane. I appreciate Shane that. Evans, He's a good buddy of mine. Shane Evans. Yeah, he, that was driving me crazy. We went. ECW was there one time. We were hung out of the tavern beforehand. And I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the wrestlers in there afterwards all getting drunk. <laughs> That was a fun time because wrestling in the South was always huge, especially being around Memphis. So, and I got to ask, um, being so close to Memphis and from South Haven, this, the whole blues around there, did that play a lot like in your early music? I mean, you said you just got the country when Darius Rucker came over. I mean, what were you into beforehand? I mean, what kind of music were you? Cause I, was, uh, I see you, I hear a lot of reggae. I hear a lot of different backgrounds than you. Uh, well, I, I was brought up really, um, my favorite type of music is I, I love like David Ruffin. I love Otis Redding. Nice. I love, you know, like Tim Smokey Robinson, you know, um, mm -hmm. and blues was a big, you know, big, big deal too. I, I love blues. I love, oh man, Bobby Womack and all those, oh, all those guys, you know, people, people, my thing uh, is that I want to feel something, you know, when I hear music. And mm -hmm. my wife will tell you now, I listen, I like people, my, my buddies think I'm crazy because I listen to all types of music. I mean, yeah. especially if we're in the truck, I listen to gospel, I listen to Christian music, I listen to rock, I listen. And it puts you in the mood. Yeah, la, la, Latino music, I listen to reggae, I listen, I mean, rap, I mean, hip, it, everything. I listen to it all. And it just, you know, gives me just a perspective, you know, like X Factor taught me so much to not just stay in one zone, you know, it just gives me a perspective on everything. And so yeah. that's why when I'm on stage, I like, I, I mean, when I feel it, I feel it, you know, and a lot of people say you put on a show and all that. It's just, it's not a show to me, you know, I actually, I, I don't do that just to get, you know, more claps or more screams, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, I actually really enjoy every, every part of it. And when I feel it, I feel it. So, the, the blues did play a, a part, but, you know, more of the old school Motown R&B, you know, mm -hmm. and I would never forget waking up, you know, on a Saturday morning and my dad has a stereo, you know, pumped it. Papa was a rolling stone, you know, nice, you know, nice. I, I'll never forget any of that. So that that every on a weekend waking up on a Saturday and Sunday, you know, and my dad playing all those hits, you know, Aretha Franklin, Smokey Robinson, Otis Redding. You know, uh, the OJs, all that good stuff. And I, yeah, that's 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 more of my type right there, you know. For sure, man. Yeah, big influence on that, too. Oh, yeah. It's funny, I was going through all my pictures that I was going to get ready or for the show, and I found this one. So this is actually where you opened up for Jamie Johnson. Yes. So your first big show. So this is an aerial of Snowden Grove or whatever it's called now. Yeah. Uh, in South Haven, Mississippi, and also the very first place I saw our church. So. There's something else that's kind of you and I have in common. So my first place I saw a church, the first place you open up your biggest show, pretty much. Yeah, my biggest show. And what was cool was, uh, man, the, oh, that this going to bring like, this just give me chills to talk about it. But <laughs> like, th was it two or three years ago, the mayor uh, contacted me and um, on the 4th of July, they have a big thing there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, usually I, uh, on the 4th of July, we'll go to Horn Lake and play, but the mayor wanted me to come back there and have a hometown show. And it was the most amazing. It was my, it, I was the headliner. So it was, oh, the, dude, yeah, that's wild. it was the most amazing. I think it was my favorite show yet. And I think it was like two, three years ago. And the mayor was like, I want you to come back here and do this hometown show and you be the headliner. And when I say that place was crazy packed, it was, it was wild. It was good to be on that stage knowing that I'm not opening up for anybody. This is actually my show. And these are my people, you know, yeah. 50% of those people that were sitting out there, I know them and went to school with them, you know, so. Now you really, just need to be the key to the city or something. I, I, man, hopefully <laughs> one day. Hopefully one day. <laughs> That's awesome, though, man. Because I, I used to love, like, like, when I lived down in Corinth, being, like, South Haven, Olive Branch, that whole area over there, I man, I used to love over, like, just the whole Memphis area, I mean, because that's right there in Memphis. I know yeah. whenever church played yeah. South Haven, you always say Memphis. Yeah, it's right but, it's um, right next door, not even. South Haven is not even 10 miles from Memphis. We're right on the line. So Yeah, yeah, it's not far at all. So I used to love going over to that area and checking everything out. So that's why I think when I first found out you're a Mississippi guy, I was like, all right, I like him already. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so, yeah. my home. 
Did you ever play in Corinth at all? Any of those places they had? I know they had a couple of places downtown did, there. Yes, I have played in Corinth, uh, little holes in the wall. I, I couldn't tell you the name, but I'll tell you one yeah. thing. I've never been in them. <laughs> see that, no, no guy my age should never been yep. in bars. But I mean, that's what I was doing when I was 16, 17. I was playing in, you know, little yeah. balls. That's how I was, you know, people. That's how I got my fan base. It's those little holding walls, and I miss them, you know. Those are my yep. bars, man. So, yeah, I played a few bars in Corinth, Hernando, uh, Como. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all around that place, man. So, um, let's see how how is this this killing you right now, man? Just the whole quarantine thing. I know Nashville's slowly starting to open up, but slowly. Is there any talk of any live music anytime soon coming back? Or, uh, well, there I I went there. Um, uh, I think it was last uh, two weekends ago when they first opened, kind of started opening up a couple of bars, but mm -hmm. it was open up to go inside. You can get drinks and you know, which is crazy. Right. Because, you know, downtown Broadway, you can't have any drinks outside, you know? Yeah. So, which is crazy. Letting people now walk. It's it's, it's just funny how the law abide by <laughs> when they want to abide by, you know? Exactly. I, the same thing around here because they, all of a sudden bars start doing to-go service where you could get, like, the bar food, but also you get a pint of beer or whatever. Yeah. And we're like, camp on It's like, that, you can never do that on, on Broadway. You can do that in Bill. Yeah. Yeah, Beale Street Broadway, for sure. Yeah, but on Broadway, there was no taking your drink. They was they will lock you up for taking your drinks outside. Now it's just like you can like I don't know, but that's a different story. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's man, it's uh, it's taking a toll on a lot of people I know. Uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. I know, it's definitely taking a toll on me because I'm I've, I'm not used to being in the house, you know, this long. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm used to being on the go on the go, knowing I got a show every night and um or doing something. But uh, I think my first, I was telling my buddy this morning. My buddy called me around like one o'clock this morning, um, and uh, we were talking. And I told him, I said, "Man, the first two and a half, three weeks, I was going bad, crazy. Like I was, I was oh. about to lose it. And then I think I came in the house, and my wife was just like, "Hey, you got to get over this, you know." <laughs> and I went back out in the garage and I came back in. And I was like, you know, you're right. There's nothing I can do about this. You know, my thing is, it wasn't really for me. It was for my, I, you know, my, yeah. I think my members can back me up on this. I'm such like, uh, I look out for my band before I look out for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's one thing I've learned over the years is that my band comes first to me, you know, and, and some people probably say that's a bad thing, but the players I have, you know, I, I want to keep them as much, as long as I can, you know, so. Oh, especially yeah. talking about putting one on salary and something yeah. like that. I mean, it's just that's around, that's still so talking that's about that's yeah. Band members, I'm so serious. So that's huge. I was, think, I was thinking more of them because I know, I know, from my years, I, God has definitely blessed me to be able to, you know, I don't have to play full band shows. I can go out and play acoustic and sing by myself. Mm -hmm. I can make a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. And um, but them guys, they they're just musicians. You know, they don't sing or anything. They just play music, and if they don't play music, they don't get paid. You know, so. uh yeah, so I think I just felt more bad for them, and you know, but thank God we got people, you know, friends and stuff, you know, people like in Pennsylvania and you know, yeah, California and all that that you know that that has been blessing us for the last two months or so, you know, and anything we need we can call them or you know, but great people in our corner for sure, and I've met a lot of great people, so I'm very grateful for that. Oh hell yeah! But I'm, I think there's a lot of strong supporters out there. I notice. Yeah. And uh, I tell you this, I, I would never ever complain about playing another gig ever in my life. You know, <laughs> there'll I, never be a bad venue. <laughs> yeah, there, there, I don't care if I go back, you know, to playing to three or four people, you know, I, I I would never complain about picking up my guitar and playing in front of somebody ever again. So uh, it's taught me a lot. I've got I've had the chance to actually do stuff. I've actually had the chance to go fishing more. You nice. know, um, do a little hiking with my buddies and. But uh, yeah, it's been great getting the baby room together, you know. So yeah, right. So the the baby's coming soon, right? You're not a dad just yet, right? Just yet, but he would be here very soon. She went to the doctor uh, yesterday. She's one centimeter. So uh, oh wow, so it's very soon then. It was supposed to be June twelfth. He's okay. Due date, but I'm hoping he. Come. I think he's gonna come early. Nice man, nice. You're gonna have a good first Father's Day for sure, dude. I'm, I'm <laughs> excited about it, and uh, yeah, Axel, Axel Jack Anderson. 
Dude, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Excellent Anderson. Look at this. All right, double A. <laughs> I like it, man. Your world's gonna change, but it's gonna change for the better, man. Being a dad is is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And it's definitely something that shows you you have more meaning to life because now you have another life you're responsible for. Yeah. So you definitely think different at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's awesome, man. It's one of the greatest things. So yep. any dad can give you the best advice in the world, but there's never the best advice for a dad because you're going to be your own dad. You're going to be a yep. badass dad. That's <laughs> the best response I've ever got for, from any man. That, that <laughs> kid. Like there, and I don't think like, I don't think there's no advice. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't think there's no advice for being a dad. Like you're going to raise your child. How you want to raise your child? Mm -hmm. raise your child. So, you know what your parents did right and did wrong. You know yeah. how you were raised and what you would have liked to be different. Yeah. So and that's how I raise my kids. Yeah. So, but I mean, because that's all we can do. We only can do what we know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially being a dad, man, because we don't know shit going into it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one thing, I don't know nothing. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to tell you, you're having a boy. So, so make sure if you guys haven't had the shower yet, which you probably already have, but they make these little cups that go over when you're changing the diaper so you don't get peed on. But, oh, yeah. uh, they're like uh, pee pee covers or something like that. It's just like little little cups they put on them. <laughs> I think we got one of those. I've heard that a lot, so I think we got. One. Yeah, so definitely watch out for that because I mean life changes, but man, you're gonna have a ball, dude. So definitely gonna have fun, and the kids gonna love some music for sure. You're gonna have a badass dad. <laughs> so I like that Axel man. That's a good name. So Axel Jack Anderson. That's badass, dude. So this is Jack from Jack Daniels. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's a good thing. So what got you? What, 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 where did your passion for Jack Daniels come from? <laughs> <laughs> Other than high school drinking days. <laughs> I, I would say, yeah. here's the raw, here's the raw. <laughs> <laughs> Another raw story. <laughs> Another raw story. <laughs> Look, so I'll be honest with you. Uh, this probably sounds bad, but I can say this now I'm 25 and there's any kids watching, don't do this. But I literally, I think I started trying alcohol when I was 11. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I'm a southern boy. I mean, who doesn't? I guess your yeah. dad used to give you a little beer when you was a baby, you know, or you know, a little whiskey to numb your gums. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I I think I tried when I was eleven. Then uh, you know, didn't really drink a lot, but it was more like Sparks and <laughs> and uh, boom yeah, Sparks, sparks boom dude. <laughs> my or my tongue, it would dye my tongue orange, dude. <laughs> I would have an orange tongue every time I drank Sparks. Yeah, spark, That's uh, so for, funny. And then I, I think, uh, yeah, I was probably at the end of my eighth grade and ninth, beginning of ninth grade. And I think, um, I think I went camping with my buddy Austin Livingston, and I used to go camp with him and his grandparents a lot. And his, you know, grandpa didn't care if he drank, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was just it. And after grandpa used to drink a little, either Old Charter or Jack Daniels. And uh, my first really time. Actually, having Jack Daniels, it was—I mean, it literally was the best thing that ever, you know, I've mm. ever had. And after that, it was just that was it, you know. I, Jack Daniels was uh, my best friend, and uh, when I got sponsored at twenty-one, that was the most exciting thing ever. So I was like, I got sponsored at twenty-one. That is at bad. 20, at twenty-one, I was in. There ain't nobody I don't think could say they got sponsored at twenty-one by Jack Daniels. Like, hey, I just turned twenty-one. Jack Daniels sponsored me. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, and. I, I was at Tootsie's. I was at Tootsie's probably like on a Thursday night or something. And um, it was probably, we were getting ready closed up, closing up. It was like 2.30 in the morning. I think it was my last song, and I did Tennessee Whiskey. Nice. And, and behind the stage, I didn't know Jack Daniels' crew was there. They were having a private party. And this guy comes to me and says, hey, I'm a part of Jack Daniels. And, of course, in Nashville, you get all those people who's a part of this and part of that. And yeah. You don't never hear from them again, but um, – I end up, you know, emailing the guy the next day, I think, and like two days later, there's I looked downstairs from the loft, and I was in Jacks, Tennessee. And I looked downstairs from the loft, and there's like four boxes of Jack Daniels stuff. Oh, they had sent me, and then we just talked, and I, we played at their Christmas parties. Their uh, the world biggest barbecue with Stormy Warren and uh, Cal Jacobs, and yeah. all those. It's fun time. <laughs> Have you done any? Uh, what was that why we were hunting yet? <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> I got nice. that. I got that letter last year. I was like, man, this is wild. I, I love, especially being a squire, because you get funny letters in the mail and different things. And it's it's really cool, like little thing to do and be yeah. a part of. And you don't know what you're ta we're talking about. Sorry, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> find out for yourselves. No, um, it's just a really cool little club for Jack Daniels. And um, but it's it's awesome place. Uh, 
So when are you gonna buy your first barrel? You think? When did you get the first gold album? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or or somebody cut one of my, uh, or if Eric Church would cut one of my songs, or I can. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That would be a good one, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, out of all the people I've opened up for, Eric Church has definitely been my idol, of course, and everybody knows that. Who knows that about me? But uh, yeah. Out of all the people I've met and all that, man, I haven't got a chance. I've seen Eric Church at least 200 times, but I haven't got a chance to meet him either. Mm -hmm. Because when I was using him, I didn't have the money to meet him. But yeah, uh, I still kind of probably don't have the money to meet him. But <laughs> yeah, and you probably bumped doubles with him. I didn't even know it because you guys were running around the same area for yeah, the longest probably, time. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm like a. He probably want to meet me because I'd probably be that fan girl. You know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan girl on anybody else. I shake your hand, I treat you. I mean. Of course, I know a lot of famous people, but I think I think that I probably would cry if I meet, met him. <laughs> if I just, sure. if, my thing is, if I ever got a chance to meet him, I just want to sit down and I just want to listen to him talk for about an hour, you know. And I just, yeah. I just want to like ask him like questions that I've always wanted to ask him. And yeah, that that would be think my thing. I haven't got a chance to meet him yet, so um, that's if I ever if I could give him get him on this show, I'll bring you in to co-host with me. Oh, that, that, oh, you look, that just gave me chills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, but yeah, it would give me chills if it ever happened. Y'all go, go to a lot of his shows and stuff. Y'all travel with him. Yeah, I've seen him. I think I'm at 164 is how many shows I've actually seen. The guitar behind me, he gave me for my 100th show. And I didn't know anything about it. He called me up on stage and handed it to me. And I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, I had no clue. Like, I didn't even know they knew uh, it was my 100th show until like two days or three days before the show. They actually emailed me, like his management, and said, hey, we heard it's your 100th show. We just want to know like how you became, like write a page of like why you became a fan, this and that. And I, I wrote it and just sent it in. And then the day after I got that guitar, like every radio station blog site was like sharing a story about it. And all the stuff I wrote was in that story. So they were trying to get quotes from me or whatever, I guess. And it was, it was pretty cool, though, because, I mean, he made it like a publicity stunt in a way. Yeah. But it was still pretty cool the way it happened. Every time I heard he was coming close to Mississippi or Florida, I, I was I was at probably one of those shows. Like when yeah. I first when I like that was probably 2011, 2010. So, yeah, I mean, you was going to, right you, now. You was going to shows way, way before me. You know? Yeah. Because you I mean, dude, we used to go see him at Gibson's in downtown Memphis all the time. He would play Gibson's uh, at least three or four times. He played, uh, I saw him in 2007 at, on Beale Street at the, the little park right there on Beale Street, like yeah. the little mini yeah. amphitheater. He played there and Luke Bryan opened for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah. like, you know, well, you know, that's, a, that's a good story about uh, Ash, Ashley McBride. You know, she, she was playing at Downtown Tavern at least two, three nights a week sometimes. Really? I knew she was playing in Memphis. So I didn't know she was playing in <laughs> Jeff. She too. played at Downtown Tavern a lot, man. Yeah. Nice, man. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, I mean that was a good place. I haven't been in there for a while. But you know, they they, they, they Josh they like a part it. owner of it or no? No, well they closed it. They just shut it down. I think about a year ago almost. Oh, they did. Shit, man, I didn't know about that. Well, they were trying to move it, but and then um, the owner owner was you know trying to rent out somebody. It's a long story, but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It should have. It should have stayed there. It's a great spot though. Yeah. Did anything move into its place or no? Not that I know of, man. Not that I know of. It sucks. I know. I, I talked to Josh recently, Josh Smith, that used to play with Jonathan yeah. Singleton's band, and he said he has a new bar in Mississippi now. Yeah, man. I, yeah. Uh, he sounds like he retired, I guess. I'm not sure, but <laughs> that's like my favorite. Um, like, there, if anybody I can sit down and listen to for at least two, three hours straight, he'll be one of the guys. He, I'll, if he, if his ass retired, I'll get his ass out of retirement. <laughs> he has, he has one of the most amazing voices. He does. Yeah. I mean, he would play uh what was the one? Suspicious Minds by Elvis whenever mm -hmm. I see him. And that dude would nail that song. Like just probably like I almost like I loved watching Singleton and the Girl because of the two of Singleton and Josh together. Yeah. I mean, those two guys together were just phenomenal. Yeah, I have to do my research. I had to do my research and all that. Well, you know, man, Josh, we did a song. Josh wrote a song. We did a uh, uh Jackson together or something like that. Uh I forgot. Okay. Uh, he wrote a verse, or uh, and then man, the man Coden, they we had the whole video and everything about that song. It was it was a really cool thing because he got a lot of Jackson, Tennessee people or West Tennessee mm -hmm. people to be in, and it was really neat. So, uh, Jessica, yeah, that Minglewood show. Um, the first time Eric ever played Minglewood 
So just a quick, I mean, I think I've shared this story before on, on this podcast, but I still actually have, uh, it's over here on the wall, a little clipping, but that night we found out. So the night before that he played, I think Rick's cafe in Starkville. Oh. And I was just laughing and joking with somebody. I took my boot off during these boots and held it up and everybody was like, what the hell is this guy doing? And a couple of other people just did it just for the fun of it. Well, then the next night we heard that Rolling Stone magazine was in Memphis and they wanted to do a photo shoot of something at the Minglewood with Eric. And someone's just like, what about that boot thing Shriver started last night? So the, uh, this lady, Carla, and I, she was actually on my first episode. We printed out like a thousand flyers of says, raise your boots or in these boots or whatever. We handed them out. And I still have what it says. Yeah, raise your boots during these boots tonight for a magazine photo op. Is all it said. It's a picture of us raising boots from the night prior that someone got. Crazy. And we we hung handed them out, and that night everybody raised their boots and that tied is, me in wood. That is crazy. That's <laughs> and <it> never stopped. <laughs> hey, that's amazing. That's a real yeah. Movie. And just funny because like someone asked Church about that story one time, and they're like, "Fucking Shriver." <laughs> that's all he would say. That's so cool. Jessica, I actually. No, that's actually the Gibson I have. I think I had one, but I have one from Gibson when he played Gibson's Lounge. So, do you, is that place is gone, isn't it? Gibson's Lounge in Memphis. In Memphis where they used to, no, Gibson's Lounge where they used to build the the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last time I seen it, it was it was uh. Yeah. Did Gibson move out of Memphis of that area? Yeah, it was going out of uh. Yeah, it's going out of that's business. Crazy, so much, so much good history over there, and definitely like like Google guitar making and everything in that yeah. area. Just gone. Um, I mean, they had a sale. Their guitar. I should have went in there and bought the guitar. Their guitars were so cheap, man. They had a sale. Yeah, yeah it was always cool because you go, we go there for a show, and you actually got get to watch them make guitars and stuff before you go to the show. So it was really cool how they had that that set up there. So a couple things before I, we move on to our next segment. You get to play every now and then. Let's see. Let me clear these pictures out. Really cool location. And I've been seeing a lot of people getting to play the same location. Uh, so I want to share this. But down in Belize, <laughs> they, have, they have losers down there. And yeah. it was phenomenal that they moved or they built a, uh, a losers down there. Uh, that's but, uh, Earth, man. How did you get this gig, dude? This is awesome. Uh, uh, I got it by being a pain in the ass, basically. <laughs> um, uh, that's exactly how I got it. Uh, it took me about a year, man. I, Ward, uh, who we call him the mayor of Nashville, you know, Ward, yeah. Whiskey Jam and all that. So Ward, uh, I tell everybody, he's a great, great guy. He has definitely helped me out a lot. And I wouldn't be anywhere in these places that I am now if it wasn't for Ward, to be honest with you. But um. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, Ward told me that uh, I, I, they, I found out they were building one in Belize. I was trying to get it in Vegas first, my first time. Yeah. And um, the lady, I kept emailing, emailing the lady, and I'll never forget, we were leaving Nashville one night, and she was telling me prices and all that, and, you know, she was trying to find an opening, and, of course, to go around, and I think, I don't know, maybe a year later, I think it was finally like, okay, we opened up one in Belize, so we're going to get you a week in Vegas, and we're going to get you four days in Belize, and I was like... Okay, and that was that was the start of something. We did Vegas twice, and then me and Trevor went to Belize, and yeah, we, we had probably been in Belize. I don't know in the last year, at least I don't know at least twelve, thirteen times. I do. I've seen it a bunch of times. Yeah, it's it's, going and, over. And they and they pay for everything. They 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 pay really good. They pay they pay well, and um, they pay for everything. There's a condo uh, right across the street. Um, from from it like they, it's a band house it's a two-story band house like the manager mm -hmm. used to stay upstairs and the man used to stay downstairs but it's like four or five bedrooms full kitchen uh wash mm -hmm. like you don't have to leave and if you want something to eat you right walk to losers get half off with everything you know and um it's great i love it there's so many so many tourists there you know if people that come from texas and you know, we met people from military people, people from Mississippi, people from Wisconsin, people from Chicago. I mean, we meet people that have yeah, there. Over. We just came here for a wedding, and we've been here for 20 years now. You know, we haven't left. And I was like, holy crap, man. And I see why they haven't left, because it is literally the most beautiful island ever, for sure. Yeah. Definitely a place I want. It's on my bucket list I want to check out, because it's just from the photos I see from you and a couple other buddies of mine that play over there, it just looks like a really cool place oh. to see. So. <laughs> And the locals are really cool. You know, it, any place is going to be a little shady, of course, but the locals, most of the locals, you know, 95% of the locals are really, really cool. I mean, they, they, right. they, 
And if you're from America, oh my God, babe, they love you. I wonder if they're pretty welcoming to to have this bar and have just have music now or have this kind of music well, over there. Oh, at first they wasn't, man. They uh, they were, uh, of course, when they first opened, the story was they had a little small gathering, but it was for you know the owner, you know Steve, mm-hmm. and all of them. And I think Jamie Johnson and a couple people pulled up on the yacht and they did something. Just, but it, it wasn't open to the public, and I guess the yeah. trying to get in. And they was just come t- t- telling them it's not open, so it kind of left, left an ugly taste in the locals' mouth. Mm-hmm. But but they're starting to get used to it. Like we were there for Super Bowl Sunday, and it was just you know, yeah. crazy. <laughs> you know, so they're starting to get used to it. But um, I think it has potential for sure. I mean, every time we go back, you know, it's it's a lot more people there, and um, they're building a resort right across, right next door to the band house. So like it's gonna oh, be wow. a resort. So. Uh, I think, you know, Steve, the owner, he's doing very well on that. I think losers and winners, I mean, I think he's doing, I think he got a phenomenal chain going on. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely what they got going on, especially starting with Whiskey Jam. And hey, you played yeah. Whiskey Jam before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whiskey Jam. I played it, uh, played Whiskey Jam about four or five times, man. Nice, man. I, I've gone a couple of times. One of my favorites, Corey Smith, was there the night I went. So I was all excited for that one. So, but it's definitely it's really cool idea what he has going on and what he started over there. And oh man, he's everybody you know that's like really all the early from the late, I mean, what the late 15, late 16, Mm -hmm. or something, you know, everybody, Eric, I mean, you know, not Eric Church, but you know, Old Dominion, uh, Lady Antebellum, all those guys started, you know, right there at Whiskey Jam, yeah, exactly, Luke Holmes, you know. all those guys, Drew Parker, everybody who's who's up and coming now. Yeah, definitely. I remember. I think I saw Drew Parker there a couple of times. There we go. There's a whiskey jam photo. I knew I had something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. so I, I like the concept, man. It's a small little bar. Put you guys in there, and was it two songs you guys get or three original songs, man? And and every yeah. now and then you throw if you want to do a cover, if you can do a cover better than the original, you know. And of course, I throw a cover in there, but uh. But yeah, it's you, you get you on stage. You got three songs to do that, and I mean, when I say it's packed almost every Monday and Thursday, I mean, usually it's a line to get in, you know. And uh, and it's great to see people who's not on Broadway just listen to covers all the time, who actually come out to support actually, you know, real live, you know, true original. So it's a I thank War for that a lot. That's I think that's really cool, and, it, and you get to show your talent. You don't get to show, you know, you get to be you on that stage. And you exactly. get to go right there or not if they like you or not. That's it's like a it's like an Apollo, you know what I'm saying? It's so yep. <laughs> you get you get three songs and you're gonna see where you go from there. And that's whiskey jam is kinda like that. And of oh, course at the Apollo they boo you. They're not gonna boo you at Whiskey Jam, but <laughs> but I'm nah, sorry, you, you I hope not. Yeah, you will know the feeling if you killed that and you got one shot, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And if you cut if you keep coming back, you know you've done something right. So that's always <laughs> a good thing. Yeah, it's always good seeing uh, names on there again. Yeah, I, I've been there one time, and it wasn't too crazy, but it was really cool. I got there early just to make sure I, I had a spot. But uh, I was gonna—I normally do this thing called the hot seat with people. I'm gonna throw it away tonight because we're getting ready to—we're gonna get you to play a couple songs. But I want to close our our interview portion before we get to music about something that I kind of heard you say on a podcast. You did another podcast, and it was funny because my wife has been a nurse through this whole pandemic. And so she bought her team these wristbands and they came with different sayings on these wristbands. And one of them was just kind of odd, the saying on it. And I never really heard it before. And I listened to this podcast. I heard you say the exact same saying. And I was like, huh. And I liked the way you explained it. So I kind of wanted to ask you about this. But the saying was hard work outbeats talent. <laughs> and like, I honestly, I think that that saying is just for me, like she didn't take those wristbands to work because she didn't want to give them to her ner- other nurses because she was kind of like I, I, I feel kind of i don't want to offend people by this because she goes this hard work really outbeat talent and honestly i mean to you how do you feel about that but you know I, i'm really iffy about that I, I i don't i don't i don't think i don't i don't i don't truly believe in hard work beats beats talent to me. i don't either i do not believe in that because um if you want another raw version <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm loving this <laughs> I, I like to speak my mind a lot, and sometimes I, you know, I've learned over the years. I, I sometimes my opinion is not like everybody, and I don't try mm-hmm. to um, blame uh, any anybody or anything for you know where I'm at in life. I think I'm great. You know, I think 
I, the reason I say hard work to me doesn't be talent because there, I, I mean, I've been doing it for quite a while now. Do I, mm -hmm. about, would I want to get signed? Yes. Would I love a publishing deal? Yes. Try, working on one right now. Thank God. But, uh, but I've seen people who move in this town or just come in town or just post a video <clears throat> and, and get famous, you know, overnight. And when <laughs> <there's, Holmes. laughs> I, I, I believe, I believe in, I believe in paying your dues. I do yeah. I really believe in paying your dues. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to like say any names, but I was looking at somebody uh, who was doing something. And and I think the beginning of the uh, the beginning of his commercial was like, I believe in hard work. And I'm like, mm -hmm. hard work What hard work. You, you got famous online, you know, overnight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you didn't, you didn't have to sit in bars and sing to just the bartenders. You know, for four nights a week for just no money. You didn't have to sit in bars and and make tips. You know, you didn't have to exactly, sit yeah. and play till your fingers bleed in front of nobody. You didn't do that for five, six years. You know, you got famous overnight because of the right person at the right time saw you. Mm -hmm. And that's how to know. I don't think Harvard beats talent at all. I think, I think, especially these days, especially these days, I mean, look at what's going on today, man. Yeah, especially, yeah. I mean, look at the rap songs that's out right now. I mean, it's not the usually hip hop like it used to be. If, uh, everybody's mumbling. If you look at the same, if you look at country music, you, mm -hmm. you got your same pretty guys who's trying to be the next Luke Combs, who's trying to be the next Kane Brown or whatever that's doing yep. things. And it's not. It's like everybody's signing those guys who already sound like somebody. How about signing somebody who's trying to do something different? That's why I believe that exactly. Kip Moore, Kip Moore is very underrated. Yeah, I love Kip. Very He's underrated. My favorite. That guy mm -hmm. should be on top. Huge. Every yeah. album. He hasn't put out a bad album yet. Yeah, not at all. Mm -hmm. not, and that Wildfire, I mean, the, uh, or, or the Wild Ones album. Yeah. Excuse, my, excuse me, but that's my opinion. It should have been way on top than the Dude. John Party California out, Sunset mm -hmm. album. You know, and I, yeah. I hope never, I mean, John Party. I love the guy. Yeah. It's stuff like that that makes you. That, that, that just shows you know it's it's not about hard work these days it's about uh who's gonna be the next who yeah it's, it's not gonna be who the, who's gonna be the next original who could know? they make up and make and put yeah. on top overnight yeah. i mean and i know and this is why i like you and that's why i kind of want to really bring end this conversation with this with that saying because i mean you're a church fan and i want to connect this with it and a few years ago eric made comments about miranda and yeah. things hit the hit the fan and everything happened and he pretty much was saying the same thing like these people that go on these tv shows and everything and have i mean you got to do all of it i mean you were on the tv show but you still went to the bars and still grinded at 16 yeah. 17 18 because that's kind of what you wanted to do and still you to this day still to this day i have no manager no yeah. book in my i do i've been doing all my own work yep. everything by myself but, but that TV it, show lit a fire under your ass yeah. enough to get you going, yeah, and it, push it, you it, to work hard. Yeah. But you have the talent, yeah. And, and I, it's like people who who work hard and that have talent don't get the yeah. respect I think that they should because of everybody who's trying to be the next somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, exactly. What, what about that original guy right there? There's who, too many karaoke singers in Nashville. Yeah, that's like, exactly. way too many. Everybody's trying to sound like the record. Everybody's trying to do mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That's what exactly what it is. And not, I mean, a lot of people aren't singing their own shit either. I mean, it's starting to happen more and more lately. A lot of original, more originals are getting out there. But like, I mean, there's like, like Tim McGraw. I don't think he's ever written a song in his life. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, I'm not dissing the guy. He's amazing. Yeah, but yeah. I, love, I Tim. love Tim McGraw. But it's just like he doesn't have the talent to write a song and probably, sing it. It's probably been how many years since Jason Aldean wrote one of his songs? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I love Jason Aldean. We were just looking at his babies videos in there man my wife she loves his wife but I yeah mean, yeah it's like people like that but how many people that has actually like with the like when eric church said you know uh 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 we're the ones in the paint you know you know yeah like like he said with it with that crowd right there people the outsiders people look people look it's a it's a people don't like the people that that was his uh, anthem that was his anthem album i yeah. think yeah. <laughs> I think I mean what when the song got sour is my favorite because when he say that, you know, we're the in crowd, we're the other ones, you know, it's mm -hmm. a different kind of cloth that we cut from. I think it's so true because those people, us outsiders, get looked over because we're not yeah. trying to be like everybody else. We're not trying to sing the same thing. We're trying to actually do something different. But nowadays people just want the same 
Same old same. Of bullshit. It's kind of hard for somebody <laughs> to believe in you, you know, to take a chance out on you because they're not going to take a chance out on you when everybody else is putting out the same shit. Like, okay, if they're making money off this, I'm going to make money off that. Then I don't want to go for this guy who actually really got something good going on, you know? <laughs> no, I agree, man. I totally agree. So, and yeah. I, I see it all the time, man. All the time do I see it, and especially around Nashville. It's yeah. just like, and it gets frustrating, I bet, for people, especially someone like you who's grinding. Oh, I mean, you're, very, you're playing like four or five nights a week on Broadway for a while, weren't you? Very frustrating to me, man. And But, you know, I've learned over the years of, of growth and getting older, you know, because I'm going to be honest with you. When I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I think it took me to about, I was, I don't know, 22 years old to realize, okay, okay, maybe you just need to slow down. But I was ready to get signed. I thought me coming to Nashville, I was like, oh, you know, and I'm not going to lie to you. I was cocky. I was like, oh, they're going to see a black guy who's actually decent. They're going to sign this guy. They're going to have to sign me. And I was, I, yeah. I was that cocky. But And it took me looking around like I would, I would be playing, and then this, the band that would play before me or the band that would play without me, they wouldn't show up. And I asked where these guys are, and they'd be like, oh, they're on tour, or they got signed. I'm like, what the fuck did I do wrong? Yeah. <laughs> like, what did I do? I just heard them play. They they don't have anything on my band. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, and it, it and it makes you actually like. There's nights where I actually would come in this room or like up lay up at night and ask myself, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Like, I would like recheck myself, you know, multiple, and I still do that sometimes. I'll be honest with yeah. you. I still it it's like a self conscious thing, I guess. You know, what am I doing so wrong? That yeah, we all do that, man, because I've done it before. I mean, I've done it with before just in life in general, being a dad. I mean, you're going to question things that you're passionate about and you're, you'll question your passions from time to time. At least I have. Yeah. And, and but as long as you're passionate about it, I feel like you're still going to grind at it. You're still going to work hard on it. And it's going to yeah. happen. Today, man, it's yeah. and someone's going to see the talent you got, dude. I've, and that's what I say. I've learned patience and, you know. There's been mm -hmm. a few people in my corner who's definitely has been helping me along the way. Josh Miller has been definitely one of them who's who's been re encouraging me every single day almost and telling me, "Hey, you're young, yeah. take your time. You got it. You know you got the artist thing down. Keep writing, keep going." And um, that's what I do now. I'll be honest with you, I, and and a lot of people don't like it, or you know, I don't really go out a lot with different groups of guys. I stay in my lane. Yep. I don't I don't do songs that everybody try to do. I stay in my lane and um. I just don't focus. On, I don't. I don't care what the next guy's doing anymore. You know, I don't care what the next guy's doing. This is what yeah. I'm doing. I'm not trying to be the next anybody. Um, if you don't like, at this point, I'm like I'm 25. If you don't like what I'm doing now. It's gonna take that special person who don't want any money from me to pick yep. me up. And say, hey, this guy got it. You know, it's gonna take that. And for, no, and for no one that's seen you yet, you're you you play bars. You play the typical three or four hour bar shows, but your covers are not covers. I mean, they're literally songs that you will hear and then be like, damn, that song would sound good in this beat or this style. And then like you'd hear it in your head and then you play it on stage with your band and damn. And you said earlier, you guys don't even rehearse. Yeah. But it's so damn cool to hear you guys come together. Like when I first, when I first heard you is when you did that Springsteen melody. Uh, and I know you did, I think it was record year right in the middle. And it was a reggae beat. Yeah. And it was just so amazing. Like I was just blown away. I think I got a little video of it. And I, I threw it on my page and, it was right before um it was right i think it was the weekend eric played in a nissan and you were at dirks yeah yeah and a couple of us stopped in because i know tonight when i was sharing the show oh uh, one of my buddies that watches the show every week he was talking to uh, saying man i remember checking that guy out before the nissan show and he was wild he was really good so that's why i, I was calling the church choir tonight man to really check you out because i think oh. if if they hear you and see you they're really gonna like your your style because they're gonna see a lot of church and like in your style, but a lot of just not like not him for, per se, but like a lot of the same attitude. Yeah. 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 I, so. yeah. That's one thing about me and church. I think we have like the same attitude and that's why I love so much about him. Cause basically yeah. he's, he's, he's not that like, he's not the in crowd. He's definitely different. And he fought, he damn sure fought his way to get where he's at right now. So and I, I believe, and I, and I believe that's why he, that's why he go out and help a lot of people like him and Jamie Davis, you know, Jamie Davis was yeah. a story about him and, um, yeah, I, I haven't even met Eric Church, and I, and I just feel like our connection is the same. You know, we're on the same page. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Same area, same or same, just the same grind, man, for yeah. sure. And that's why I, I saw so much in you and just kind of 
it's like just blown away that first night in Jackson. I was like, damn, this guy's good. <laughs> and sometimes, man, I'm telling you, and I used to, I had just slowed down, but I was doing sometimes six shows in four days, or, you know, you know, like it was, it was crazy. I would, I would pull doubles, you know? Um, yeah. And I still do sometimes. I had my wife made me slow down, but you know, I, I love it that much. I don't care about the money. I, I can give less care about the money. The money is going to come and go. And I spend yep. it all the time anyway. So, but uh, I just I, I do it so much because I love it, and you know I don't I don't think I, a lot of people ask me will you ever get drained? I don't think I would ever get drained because playing in front of a new crowd every night is something that I mean I don't know that energy is just some serious you know that that mm-hmm. energy you know <laughs> especially I mean I, and that's why I mean I know you you love the bar shows too I mean but I think you would definitely take it to a bigger stage well as uh, as well I mean like you, you say you played the, the mayor's event in uh in South Haven there and you've done some more bigger shows. And I bet you, I mean, you're the type of guy that could really get the crowd behind you. So I definitely want to see where you're the groove you're going to fit in man. kind of the growth you're going to get. So, so, but yeah, man, I'd love to get to try to get you to play a couple tunes for us before we have to let you go for the night. And before we hop on to the Patreon show, yeah. um, my favorite, my favorite by you that I've heard is dudes running back to you. So, I mean, if you don't mind kicking us off with that one, that'd be phenomenal. Yeah. I can do- <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Right, I'm gonna go off screen. And give you the give you the spot. I've seen the New York City sky. Seen a California sunset one or two times And I've seen sea out of rain And Chicago's pretty cool But lately all I wanna do Is come running back to you yeah. Is come running back Oh, you're a sweet ass, Georgia peach ass. You're pretty ass, the Carolina beach ass. Every mile that I've flown through, can't hold a candle to. Tennessee's got you, so I come Girl, I come running back to you. 
Love it. Love it. And that is an amazing song. What was the inspiration behind that one? Man, uh, I, I, when I first met Jonathan, I, when he played me this song, you know, and uh, we are, he played me, I don't know, the first time I met him, he played me like 50 songs, I feel like. Yeah. Um, uh, this was just. And what inspired you to grab that song from him? I mean, that's that one. That's just like such a, I don't know. Man, when I when I heard it when he when he when I heard it and I heard the demo that he played and I sat there in the office and I and it just literally gave me chills and uh <laughs> my thing is I think I I know a good song, you know, I, I feel mm. like uh and I think that was just it. I just knew that was you know, I've never been a real love song singer until like yeah. I really got with him, you know, but uh that was it. That was uh <laughs> running back to you and the, the second verse, man, was just like, you know, uh, the, the Georgia Peaches, you know. Yeah. So I was like, ah, uh, that was really, that was really you it right hear there. the singleton in, in it when, even when you play it, too. I mean, you could definitely hear the the tone there. I mean, I love it. It's just like all about, I think that's probably why I really kind of connected with that song. Because I was like, damn, this one, well, and it says Chicago. But <laughs> I, like, I like that one. So, we got we got time for you to do one more before we gotta let you go, and then we're gonna hop on our Patreon after show over on Facebook, uh, our private Facebook group. Um, go ahead and pick us original, man. I want to know what are your favorite originals that you've ever done. I know we did talk about one called uh, "I Would." That oh you yeah, might we do that. Do. <laughs> I was going to do that on the after show, but I kind of think I wanted you to do that on this one instead because I was really listening to when I was listening to that other podcast you were doing. I was listening to you talk about that song. So I'd like for you to kind of set us up for that song before you start playing it. Okay. So uh, this, uh, when we do I Would Now? Yeah, 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 man. Okay. Let's hear it. So, uh, I, man, I wrote this song. Uh, I wrote this song in high school. And uh, everything in this song, you know, in my life, I lost a lot of people uh, in my life. And uh, I've done, I wasn't really the wild child. I was the youngest out of six kids. Um but I was always the class clown, but I was a slick partier, you know, and uh, that, that was my thing was, I, and I still, I, I'm that type of guy where I think, you know, life is short, let's have fun, let's do it now. So, um, I don't know, I would came and it was just, you know, we all have those things in our life we wish we could go back and change. Yeah. For me, this, these are a few things I wish I can go back and change in my life. And, um, and I just figure, you know, people can, can relate to this i haven't put it out this you know you you write those songs that's actually like heartfelt heartfelt you know that like mm -hmm. i don't want to give this song away you know unless it was eric church but <laughs> but uh this is one of those songs uh where i just you know wish i can just go every every line in this song is true every single line in this song is true so uh this song is called i would cool Oh, 
have told your dad how much you loved him while taking his last breath only if he could <laughs> you damn right I would yeah. by that time I missed my brother called my phone two hours later he was gone for the time I told that girl I love her knowing I didn't care but only if I could you damn right I would If you could turn back the hands of time Dream that last memory in your mind Have a last beer with your friend Not knowing if you'll ever see him again Instead of kicking that guy's ass For talking all that trash Will you have a walk away? Be a bigger man, only if you could. You never right I would. Yeah. You never right I would. We all have those days where we go through that phase, wondering if something could have been changed. If you could turn back the hands of time, change that last memory in your mind, have a last beer with your friend, not knowing if you'll ever see him again, instead of kicking that guy's ass. Talking all that trash, will you have walked away? Be a bigger man, only if you could. You know I would. Yeah, you know I would. Oh, if I could just turn back the hand of time. Oh, I would, I would. Man. <laughs> Dude, that song got me, man. <laughs> That was good. That was that. So I've heard bits and pieces. I never heard that whole song, but man, it yeah. definitely, definitely just got yeah. me. Um, yeah. Last year, I kind of a good buddy of mine. We kind of called it off. And if I could go back and have one last beer with him, I definitely would. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and true. it's definitely so that, that part of the song got me for sure. But every part of that, dude. Yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a jam. <laughs> So that is, yeah, that definitely had me in the feels. Uh, Melanie is actually commenting. She, her husband was one that, that was commenting about him seeing you the weekend uh, church play Nissan. And that oh, yeah. he was a big, big fan of yours. So thank you. Thank you. It was awesome to have it. Yeah. It was cool getting to know him a little bit too. Cause it was cool to like actually getting to meet you. Cause you yeah. and I have been back and forth, like on social media, we yeah. met once, but we never really got to sit down and actually just chat. So it's always, it's cool, too, man. I get it. I mean, I get so many people who hit me up on social media. Like I said, I do all my social, I do everything. I do all my social yeah. media, all that. Um, so, like, I, there's always people who, who's like, we've been following you for these amount of years, and we've been here these amount of years and all that. And um, to, when I finally meet them and they show me the the messages of them, mess and we're messing back, it's like, oh, so, <laughs> like, people come all the way from Australia and Canada, man. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. And they, For would, sure. they would ask me to sing that song with where I'm from and stuff like my old, old original song. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> like it's so cool. So we definitely got a request from where I'm from. So I'm thinking for our after show, I definitely got to get that one from you because that one sounds like a good one. Yeah, that's so. a good song for you. 
Well, man, it's been great. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, and uh, we're, I'm gonna holler you here in a few minutes, and then yeah. uh, we'll get on the after show. But dude, I've had a great time catching up and talking with you tonight, dude. This has I, been awesome. I love it, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, let's let's do this. All right, man. All right. Well, I'll let you go now, and I'll I'll holler you here in a few minutes. All right. All right, man. Talk to you in a minute. All right. All right, guys. That was Skylar. God, that was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for tuning in for the night show. This was one of my one of my oh I keep saying everyone's my favorite, but one of my favorites for sure. And uh we're gonna we're gonna bring them back on here in a little bit. It does say 9 30. We ran a little bit over. I should just take these shows back to 90 minutes. I know. Uh every week I still run over my 75s, but we're gonna try to we'll see what happens. <laughs> we're gonna take about a 15-minute break. We're gonna end here in a few minutes, take about a 15-minute break. So I'm gonna say about 9 45. We're gonna come back. Is on about 9 45. We're going to be back on our Facebook Patreon page. If you guys do want to get in on it, I'm going to share the link on our, on our chat. Uh, just go ahead and check it out. Uh, different tiers over there. And uh, let me know everybody in the next 15 minutes that gets signed on. I'll send you a quick message. Uh, I'll try to on either uh, Patreon or Facebook and give you the link to the private group where we were going to bring Skylar back on. So, it's going to be a good time. So in about 9.45 to about 10.15-ish or so, 10.10, we'll see what happens. We're going to have Skylar back on, sing about five more songs or so. And uh, I know he's going to do a church one. <laughs> so if you guys are in the Patreon group, can't wait for this. So I'm going to try to get him to do that mashup that really got me to fall in love with him and his style. So, but um, thank you guys so much again for joining us for episode 35. And uh, we're going to have the after show coming up, um, man, next week. If you guys are ready for if I was actually wanted to break my 130 days of drinking or whatever of not drinking, I mean, <laughs> I'd probably do it next Tuesday night because I'm going to have a fun, fun time. So we are bringing back or bringing on one of our choir members, Miss Carrie Lynn Hyde next week. And it's a show that I am definitely looking forward to closing out the month of May. And I will be announcing June's schedule very soon. Uh, we are supposed to be having another in-studio guest coming up this June. So if they come up, um, if we still end up having the in-studio in June, I'll let you guys know. But I will be announcing that lineup very soon. So join me next week for Carrie Lynn Hyde. And thanks again, y'all. We'll see you guys soon. Well, I'll see some of you guys in like 15 minutes. If this is good play. There we go. I was looking for that right there. So yeah, the Gain It Fast on Memphis podcast with Aaron Shriver is brought to you by Arlo Revolution. As we close the book on another chapter, remember, music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. Next week, Aaron connects more melodies and memories with other fans and the artists they love. Thanks for being a part of this musical journey, and we'll see you next time on the Gain and Fast on Memphis podcast with Aaron Shriver.